While we've all heard about or seen magnets in our day-to-day -day lives, how do we use physics to describe these objects? Magnetic fields, denoted by the letter B, are what's known as vector fields. Similar to gravitational or electric fields, certain objects feel forces when placed in magnetic fields, allowing magnets to apply forces to objects without actually becoming in contact with one another. Visually, magnetic fields are depicted through arrows that point away from what's known as north poles and towards south poles. One specific type of object that feels forces in magnetic fields are moving charges. Given by the Lorentz force equation, the force felt by a moving charge through a magnetic field is charge times a cross product between the velocity and magnetic field vectors. For those of you who haven't learned about vector products, the cross product between V and B would have a magnitude of their scalar products V times B times the angle between their vectors sine theta with the direction that's found through the right hand rule, pointing your right index finger in the V direction, middle finger in the B direction, with your thumb pointing in the force F's direction. If the charged object is not moving or moving parallel to the magnetic field, no force is felt due to the magnetic field as the cross product is zero. Another type of object affected by external magnetic fields are current-carrying wires. For these objects, the force on them is given by this equation, where the L vector is in the same direction as I, or current's direction. In fact, current-carrying wires actually produce magnetic fields of their own. For an infinitely long current-carrying wire, the magnetic field is given by this equation here, where mu naught is what's known as the magnetic permeability of free space, which has a value of 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. Finally, while currents can create magnetic fields, changing magnetic fluxes can actually create potential differences, which often manifest themselves in currents. To explain this concept further, we first need to learn about magnetic flux, defined as the dot product between magnetic field and area, or B times A times cosine theta. Essentially, magnetic flux measures how many field lines penetrate any closed area loop, but this quantity can change in three different ways. The first way is for magnetic field, or B, to change. The second way is when the area loop changes area by either shrinking or growing. And finally, the last way is for the orientation of the closed area with respect to the magnetic field direction, or theta, to change through rotation, exposing the area to less magnetic field lines. These changes in magnetic flux are shown through Faraday's law of induction, which states that the EMF, or potential difference, produced is the negative rate of change of magnetic flux. The negative sign actually reveals a different phenomenon called Lenz's law, which states that any EMF or current induced will always oppose the original changes in magnetic flux. With that, you can feel good about learning a crash course about the basics of magnetism and electromagnetic induction.